This is the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. Hi there, everyone, and welcome back to the Weather Lounge. I'm your host, meteorologist Brad Miller, and I would like to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to our podcast. And by the way, we are Weatherworks, a private forecasting company located here in beautiful Northwest New Jersey. And now, for the moment we have all been waiting for, let me introduce to you my co-host, the guy that has never missed a forecast, meteorologist Mike Mahalik. Hey there, Mike. <laughs> Hey Brad, uh, man, I gotta say you have a lot of praise over here for for me. You know, but... you know when we when we prepare these podcasts and we talk about what we're gonna do on the rundown and kind of have uh, you know bullet points we're gonna get to. The longest part of the prep for this podcast <laughs> is my introduction to you. Oh, great! You're trying <laughs> to think of what can I say to Mike and what can I talk about him, uh, talk him about, uh, talk to yeah. him about. Jeez, I can't even talk uh, today. It's because it's because you're 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 enjoying the 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 glow right now of uh, my introduction. <laughs> I'm I'm so taken back by the introduction <laughs> that I don't even know what to do uh, with myself. But speaking of missed forecasts, though, mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about weather apps today, Ugh. and let's talk about uh, weather hype um, that you always see on social media out there. You see it on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. It's all over the place. You always see blizzards going on. And I think today is a good day to really hash that out here in the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that we not only we fight as meteorologists, but I think a lot of professions around the world. And we're talking about, you know, doctors and even lawyers. I mean, you know, you have the professional people that do this for a living. And yet there's a lot of folks that will go on social media or the Internet and get their own you know, background mm-hmm. about something, a weather forecast or a, a medical diagnosis, and then they'll say, oh, well, you know, this is what the internet says, though. I don't care what Dr. So-and-so says about, you know, my issue here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with, with with all the comments here. And it's so frustrating as a meteorologist because we, we fight a Twitter entry from somebody that posts a model 10 days away and shows like one to two feet of snow. And of course, it goes viral. It gets tons of likes and people are like, oh, wow, check out this for, uh, you know, January the 4th. And me- meanwhile, it's, you know, December 28th. And, you know, we're talking about over a week away. It's just, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and by no means, it's not that we're discouraging to not go right. look for your own information and try to find things out for yourself. I mean, that's great if you want to learn about weather and, and learn about how the systems are developing and, and see what the models are showing. Fantastic. But don't get um, caught up in the hype. Right, right. And that's that's the thing. You, know, you, you just can't latch on to that one right. snowstorm you see out there. I mean, you really have to do your homework on, sure. on, on what's going on around the atmosphere, not just in the United States or the Northeast portion of the United States, but across the whole globe sometimes you have to look at uh, yeah. to see if a storm makes sense. So. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about weather apps also, um, because Very how many times today. have weather apps been wrong for people mm-hmm. out there? I'm sure plenty. We want to talk about both and, and talk about what, what the problems are with each of these topics. And we'll do that right after this break. Have you ever wanted to know exactly how much snow or ice fell in your backyard? Or how much snow you just plowed from that two acre parking lot? How about getting documentation that explains why you applied several applications of salt to a busy apartment complex? When it comes to snow and ice verification, it can be a headache trying to find accurate totals for the busy winter season. Certified snowfall totals from Weatherworks provides a stress-free way to get reliable information for the exact location you need. It's your complete winter weather verification platform. For more information or to try a demo, Visit CertifiedSnowfallTotals.com or call us at 908-850-8600. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Weather Lounge. And today's topic are weather apps, weather hype on social media. Joining me again is Mike Mahalik. And Mike, you know, we may ruffle a few feathers, and I'm okay with that. You know, <laughs> we, we are, we're a podcast here that, that sometimes, you know, we may have our own opinions or we're allowed to. That's just the way it is. But a few people that or weather hobbyists that go along these lines where they post a lot of things on social media. And, you know, we take, we take that stuff personally because that's not what we want to see out there all the time. We want to 
we want to give you the right forecast or, or promote the right kind of stuff instead of seeing, um, you know, a weather model 10 days out that's producing, you know, a blizzard when mm -hmm. we know there's a right. lot of things, there's a lot of moving parts to get to that exact moment on the model. So, you know, the first thing, though, we probably need to talk about are the old weather apps that I think everyone has at least access to not only one, but several in any, yeah. any given day. Yeah, I think uh, our uh, CEO, Frank Lombardo, uh, even talked about how he was in a uh, conference one time and he asked people how many apps people had on mm -hmm. their phones. And he, I know he tells the story about, he said, how many have one? How many have two? How many right. have three? And then there was one guy that had like seven oh. on, his, <laughs> on his phone. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy to think like seven weather apps, like how do you even decide what you're going to do with that? You know, not that weather apps are bad. I mean, weather apps are great. I mean, you get temperature, you can get forecast right at sure. your fingertips. You can look at some radar, um, you know, whatever it might be. But the issue is a lot of times apps go wrong. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen that with your own weather app saying, well, it says here I'm getting an alert that rain's going to start in 15 minutes and right. nothing happens. Um, or, you know, it, it's early or late or whatever it might be. Well, the reason that is, is that many apps, and I can't speak for all, but. Right. Again, we're not going to name names, but there's yeah, a lot of them out there. And we know many we know. apps are computer generated. They're computer generated mm -hmm. forecasts. So there's not really a human behind that app saying like, I have to make sure that this rain's going to start at 3.15 right. p.m. That computer, while good and, you know, a lot of times is very right, it's not going to be 100% all the time. It's just spitting out what it's seeing. So you're not getting any interpretation by a meteorologist, you know, really looking into it and say, well, does this model have the right idea? You know, does this match the pattern? You don't have that extra quality control going on. Um, so that's why the apps generally go wrong, as far as I can see. I mean, and not only that, the apps, they change as the weather is actually changing. So really, in essence, it's not a forecast. It's it's the current weather that's trying to now cast for the next half hour to 45 minutes. And and I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen, I'm sure a lot of folks out there have seen a forecast in the morning for something, and then you get to the evening, and it's complete 180. And here's an example. A good friend of mine, he works at a ski area. They're always very interested in the weather. And now they have a weather service on their own, which is fine. Everyone, you know can do what they want with that. But he'll, he'll text me from time to time, hey, you know, our service is saying this. What do you think? Because he knows I'm a meteorologist. And mm -hmm. he's like, well, they're going four to eight inches here. You know, what do you think is going to happen here? Or he'll text me and say, you know, my app here says six to 10 inches, but our weather service is saying one to three. What do you think? And, and there is the discrepancy right there. So where in the middle am I supposed to, you know, kind of give him an idea what I think is going to happen if you got two different apps going with one to three and another one going four to eight or six to 10. And it's, it's, it's hard to figure out these days. And and if you watch the app in the morning, again, it maybe it says three to six inches, but then that evening mm -hmm. you say, Oh, wow. And look at the storm's only going to produce an inch or two now, you know, what's changed, but the app mm -hmm. doesn't care. App doesn't have any credibility really or <laughs> anyone to answer to. So they'll just, it just changes on the fly. And so, ah, well, yeah, I'll just sure. change. And that, and like you said, there's no human aspect there. Yeah, and I think you bring up the snow total, mm -hmm. and, and I think some apps even get very detailed and say, like, mm -hmm. 2.3 inches uh -huh. is going to fall in Easton, Pennsylvania, or whatever you may be. And, man, that is... That, that's hard to do. That's, that is incredibly hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as meteorologists, we, we have ranges for snow totals, sure. and we have ranges for a reason. For re it's not because we never know what's going to happen. It's because snow totals are very difficult to predict because storms can produce different ratios at different times. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on the, the lift in the atmosphere and where that lift is occurring. Is it in the snow growth zone, whether you're getting a fluffy snow or a yeah. heavy wet snow? So the ranges are there because of those type of things. It's because of the snow ratios. It's because of the start time or the end time right. or if you're going to see a changeover happen and what time does that occur? You know, that's why the range is there. It's not say, because well, of the uncertainty. 
it's because of the inherent snow ratio problems and, and the changeover problems and the start time problems. So think about this. Let's say, and we've discussed this on other podcasts, and we have blogs out there here at Weatherworks about the snow ratio. Now, typically, we, you know, a lot of folks even know this, you know, it's a 10 to 1 ratio. You know, on a normal, let's call it a normal snowstorm, 28, mm-hmm. 30 degrees, you know, you get 10 inches of snow out of one inch of rainfall. So, mm-hmm. Let's say in the summertime, you get an inch of rain out of a thunderstorm. Okay, you know what? It happens. You get a rainstorm. You get a a quick inch of rain. You move on with your day. Yeah, maybe you you run through some puddles or your car, you know, goes through some puddles in the parking lot. Now, 10 inches of snow, big deal, huge Mm -hmm. deal. You get 10 inches of snow in a couple of hours versus an inch of rain in the middle of summer. Same thing in the summertime, too. You get like a quick shower. You get maybe a quick quarter of an inch of rain. Nothing happens nothing's going to change your daytime activity with a quarter of an inch of rain. However, you get 2.5 inches of snow at, you know, five in the afternoon. Big deal. Again, Mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot of issues traveling middle of rush hour. So that's why we need the ranges. You know, one to two inches of snow is a big deal. So is six to 10 inches of snow. But, you know, the the rainfall is just the opposite where who cares if it rains, you know, an inch of rain. Some people might care. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I know if you're paving saying, a parking but, lot yeah. or a road or something like that or doing a roof, you know, and, and we have a lot of clients out there that do that type of work. And Right. I you know, know. But my main point is that, you know, it's that, that ratio is definitely a big difference and, and the ranges are, are needed oh, yeah. for everything. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the snow is certainly going to change on the ranges there, too. And in our forecast that we send to our clients, we, we also try to give them a better idea how that snow is going to fall, too. So you're mm-hmm. not just getting that straight you know, 4.4 inches, you're getting, well, the first inch or so might fall, yeah, within the, the, um, you know, an hour or two after starting, or, you know, the intensity is going to come in quickly. So that helps our guys make decisions a lot better, our clients. Yeah, that's that's Um, always a very common question. You know, it's it's, it's important to them, you know, when that first inch of snow is going to fall, or when are we going to start covering up pavement? So, yeah. And the pavement, exactly. I mean, a lot of these guys are, are plowing snow out there or trying to keep snow from accumulating on uh, zero right. tolerance areas. So um, knowing how much could exactly happen on pavement is also an important thing, too, which we tried to lay out for our clients. You know, there's a lot of benefits to an app um, being at your fingertips all the time, but there's also a lot of benefits to having meteorologists looking at those different variables, the pavement sure. temperatures and, and everything else that might happen within a storm and being able to talk to a human is a whole lot better than just <laughs> yeah. seeing what the app is showing you every year. Right. Uh, so. Yeah. Like you said, the, the app is okay. It's a good generalization for certain things, you know, like you said, temperature mm-hmm. and things like that, but you know, you want good specifics or you got certain things planned, different kinds of work, uh, you know, that's where you want a private forecasting company because in the long run, it's going to save you money versus something that's going to change, you know, four or five times a day, especially when there's yeah. quote, weather happening. So, you know, so again, that's where that human element comes in. So shifting gears a bit now, let's, let, let's talk about the computer guidance that we go by, the computer oh, models. Boy. And we know that there's, you know, we, we know as, as, Everyone has their kind of favorite model to go by, and, and a lot of people use different blends of models, take a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, you try to put together a good forecast that may be handling this situation better than this one, but this one's handling this part of the forecast better than this other one. So when we start talking about long-term model guidance, and we're going out to like five, six, seven, ten 10 days, mm-hmm. which some models go out to 240 hours, and even beyond that. The, the forecast becomes very hard to predict, changeable, changeable good word, that you're probably not going to, you can see trends, basically, that's about it, mm-hmm. I can, I think, but yeah, you're trying to, trying to pick out, you know, if, if what, you know, whatever the date is, and you're trying to say, uh, you know, 10 days from now at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., it's going to be snowing or raining right here, and it's going to rain this much mm-hmm. right here as well. Yeah, I mean, that is something that has cropped up a lot recently on social media, mm-hmm. where you know, every time a snowstorm is starting to get modeled at, uh, you know, the six to 10 day out period, you're always seeing it on Twitter, on Facebook, or somebody on a YouTube channel or whatever it may be. Look, during the winter time, I could probably pick about any day and show you a blizzard yeah. in the model. I mean, sure. <laughs> I'm, it's just how it goes. 
And the reason why is these models, they might initialize themselves just a little bit differently mm -hmm. uh, over another model. And it'll just kind of snowball that, not to yeah. you know, make a I know. silly pun on the winter, but it'll snowball that information. And down the road, it's going to develop a giant blizzard because of one little thing that was off a little bit differently in a part of the globe. It's like, just like you hear all the time, the butterfly effect, that sort of thing. Butterfly flaps its wings over here, and then it creates, you know, a hurricane yeah. over here. You know, that's basically what happens is, uh, you know, if something's a little bit wrong in one part portion, it's going to change that model exponentially over the forecast period. The longer you get out, the more uncertain it will be. And that's the, yeah, and that's the frustrating part because, you know, there's people out there that run their Twitter account or they're on Facebook and, you know, Mr. Blizzard or Mr. Yeah. Snow Watcher, <laughs> you know, and, and they'll put up these, these crazy maps. And it'll show a blizzard, you know, 10 days from right now or something like that. And, and once it's on there, it's, it, it blows up. People right. like to see that stuff somehow for some reason. Yeah. And here, here's the problem with that, okay? You could surely post your model up there showing 30 inches of snow in New York City. That's fine, whatever. But the problem with this is that it starts snowballing, like Brad said, and everybody starts seeing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Northeast. Then we have the decision makers who, you know, maybe are running the town DPW or are running a state DOT or whatever they may, might be doing are seeing this information. Then they're coming back to us and yeah. they're saying, what's going on? I see 30 inches of snow in New York City. You guys aren't saying much other than there's snow in the forecast. What is going on here? Are you not telling me the truth? Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Look, the reason why we're doing that and we're not giving those specifics is because we know that tomorrow that storm might be entirely yeah. gone. And it's happened countless times, Brad. Well, most models, you know, I mean, most models come out, or at least the, the longer term models, you know, they'll, they'll run forecast twice a day. Uh, others do it four times a day. And like you said, the early morning run may show something. And then that evening, the next run comes out and it's complete opposite. And like you said, maybe the timing's off with a certain mm -hmm. disturbance or this part's faster and this high pressure slower or the low pressure that's coming up the coast gets uh, pushed further east than was expected mm -hmm. in the earlier model run. So that poof, there goes your snowstorm or there goes your, your, your heavy rainfall out to sea and it's not going to really impact anyone. So and just as fast as that showed up on what I like to call uh, armchair meteorologists, uh, M E D I A. Anyway, media. Uh, as fast as that's on their websites or their Twitter handles or their Facebook pages, you know, the next day there's there's no hint of it because it's gone and no, right. well, uh, no credibility there. There's no loss for that person because they'll just post the next forecast that has a blizzard in it that'll get that they'll get the hype. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's and that's the problem because then that goes on to saying, well, all meteorologists are hyping things. They're yeah. just looking for ratings and blah 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 blah, but that's not true. At Weatherworks we're not looking for ratings. No, <laughs> we're looking to You're get right. the most accurate forecast to our clients so that they can make those decisions right. um, when that storm is arising. And all that stuff going out on, on social media, it really throws a monkey wrench into everything um, yeah. because then our clients are thrown off too. Say the, the weather hype, it's, it's, and it's not only on social media, Mike, and I can vouch for this because, and I can pick on TV meteorologists to a point because I was one for a long time. And I'm not going to lie, there have been times when you know, the weather is marginal for something, whether it's severe weather or it's going to be a, uh, an impactful winter weather event. And, you know, producers will come up to the meteorologist and say, hey, well, can we run with this headline or give us a good headline that we can have here that may mm -hmm. produce some added Extra viewership views. or mm -hmm. even some clicks on our weather website for our station. And again, I'm not saying that it's wrong. It, it's it's a part of the of that business, and I was a part of that business. And there there were several times when I would say, you know, there's a good chance of severe weather for the upstate, or maybe back towards the central part of the state. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, tornadoes get involved, and uh, and of course, the producer comes to me and says, oh, well, can I say tornadoes are possible across the state if you'd like? But you know, it's not really in our <laughs> immediate yeah. area it's not really going to be impactful for our viewer air our, our viewer location 
of course they want to do their job too and put a spin on it but you got to you got to cut it off somewhere and that's the same thing right. with the TV meteorologist so there's there's a there's a fine line where they can and and a good meteorologist on TV will will make sure things are right and most of them are out there are good people and they're not going to let them go you know mm -hmm. with the hype and they will kind of put that to bed or they, the, and the most frustrating part would be you know the anchors sometimes will they'll go oh well uh brad i heard there's a big snowstorm on the way <laughs> oh whoa 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 <laughs> we're jumping the gun here a little bit let's not uh you know and 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 they're live i'm live so i gotta kind of well shed a little bit and at the same time i don't want them to be looking like complete idiots either so it, it, it's yeah. tough and, and that's again the hype just doesn't go with the the social media aspect and, and things like that it, yeah. it's it's all everywhere and you see it on, on on tv as well i'm sure so so basically to counter that hype we try to do our best to sure. relay the proper information to our clients mm -hmm. and we even developed for the winter a, a product called winter risk which sure. actually lays out the storm scenarios of what could happen and what makes sense that way you know our clients have a little bit more clarity mm -hmm. of uh okay you know weatherworks does see that big storm out there but they don't think it's going to happen because of x y and z i think that's a very important part of some of the products that we do offer but uh you know when we do look out in the long range brad there are things that we look for. So it's not totally useless to see sure. that blizzard out there. And that's what uh, I was saying earlier. It's, it, we look for trends and we look for certain things exactly. that we know that are going to be a little bit more uh, reliable versus, yeah. you know, picking a time two weeks away that, you know, we see, right. that, oh, you're going to get snow here. Right. So it, there's trends we look for, just like Brad said. So if that storm keeps showing up, run after run after run after run, then we're seeing some sort of model consistency. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's actually picking yeah. up on the proper thing and right and the and other if, models start also picking up on this and before you know it, you got four yeah. or five good models that are seeing the same thing then we start to think hey this mm. could look uh you know promising this could be something sure and it's not only the um model consensus that we uh go mm -hmm. strongly on but if there are um other atmosphere patterns that are pointing towards a storm that support a storm um, that is also extra confidence that we get into the forecast. So if we see, let's say, a nor'easter developing on the eastern seaboard here, but we're also seeing the NAO going negative, or we're seeing an EPO coming in, a negative EPO mm -hmm. happening in uh, Canada. All the weather teleconnections. Um, yeah, all these teleconnections start adding up. Maybe you get an MJO wave coming out in the right area uh, of the Pacific. All these things, if they start lining up, and then you're seeing a model popping a storm, you know, then we can start saying, okay, in 10 days, we have to watch this time period for right. a big storm along the eastern seaboard. But, you know, you have to make those connections because if a storm is just popping up and it doesn't match any of those teleconnections whatsoever, right. man, that is hard to forecast. Yeah, I mean, how many times do we sit in the office and we'll sit there and this, this storm does not make sense. This, this can't exactly. happen. I mean, it, it's there on the model, of course, but it just doesn't make sense. The the the, the ingredients just don't mm -hmm. seem to all be there to produce this kind of result. And that's, yeah. like you said, that's what we, we do as meteorologists. We could see what mm -hmm. would make sense and what doesn't make sense. So when we do see a, 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 a promising setup for a, a, a snowstorm, that's when we, oh, we got this, check. We got this, check. We got this, right. check. All right, well, maybe this is kind of a, a scenario that could happen here, or, or at, least, at least it looks a little bit more favorable versus where it wouldn't sure. happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I always, I always say, and a lot of people say the same thing, it's not just me, but if you're banking on timing, strengthening of a storm to make a forecast, man, that's a tough job, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is a tough forecast. Mm -hmm. That is not a forecast I like. You know, it, that happens sometimes when we have these like Miller B storms that start as clippers. And right. then they kind of get to the eastern seaboard, hit that bear clinic zone, and just go popping into a right. giant nor'easter. Um, that happened several times uh, in New England. I remember in the winter where they had 100-some-odd inches uh, <laughs> a few years yeah. back, which was pretty amazing. And they um, got off to a, a slow start that year, too, with snow. Yeah. Anytime you're banking on you know something strengthening just at the right time or – two pieces of energy in the upper levels coming together just at the right time to form a storm and you don't have any other blocking highs over Greenland or something like that to help things out, man, that is a recipe for disaster. 
no, it's, it's, <laughs> where it's... where you have that's that's when you get your uh, storms where you're forecasting one to two feet, and then all of a sudden, you know, this storm ends up blowing up you know, 50 or 100 miles to the east, and there goes your one to two foot snowstorm. Yep. And it formed. There was a storm. It just shifted by a little bit. And wow. So think about that for one thing when we're talking about models before. That little shift can happen 50 to 100 miles can happen in the last day or two of the yep. model runs before that storm hits. So that little shift can cause that big of an issue. Then think about what that little shift 50 to 100 miles can cause in a storm eight to 10 days down the road. Right. And, and that's what, like they said, the snowball effect, you know, if this, if this is wrong and then this is wrong and then this is wrong and then this is wrong. It just piles up and adds on. And before you know it, it's so off. It's not even funny. Yeah, that's why you have to look at these models with a grain of salt. And the same thing is not only the winter time, too. I was going to say the summertime, too. Yeah. Summertime happens, too, especially in hurricane season. Man, there's always a hurricane on the GFS model, the American model. <laughs> um you know at hours yeah once we get towards like august september it's, it's uh-huh. like automatic uh that you'll see one or even two within the, the the forecast period yeah i mean it just happens and and i think the the canadian even spins them up easier it seems and uh, you know a lot of people try to you know say that one model is much better than another model and in, in, in essence it is true yeah the european model seems to do a lot better uh, on skill scores, we call them, right. with the 500 millibar pattern and stuff like that. You know, you have to look at all of these models. Right, because one just... of them, again, may be handling the, the, the situation yeah. better than the other. And and some of them have, you know, so, certain strengths for certain things and others have weaknesses for the for other things. So it's it's like you say, you get, you get good at reading the models and you're trying to figure out which one's handling a certain situation the best. You know, that's that's why we look at so many models, not just hang your hat on the European or, or yeah. hang your hat on the Canadian or or whatever it may be. I mean, there's so many out models out there, uh, Brad, you know, we've got the icon now coming out of Germany. Yeah. You know, you know, you got the uh, UK Met there and yeah, man, we could just go on and on listing models. Uh, but no, certain models the... are better at certain things, like Brad said. So you yeah. have the, the NAM model is more of a mesoscale model. If you see something happening at hour 84 on the NAM model, which is the farthest it goes out, that's probably almost identical to looking at the GFS at, you know, 240 to 384. Yeah. You know, that's that's what you have to deal with. And, you know, as meteorologists, we understand those biases of models. Mm-hmm. We, we take that in account when we're making our forecast. And that's something that you just don't see when it comes to the apps, if we bring it back around to that. Um, where they're just spitting out that model data. Yes, they might make a consensus of models or or put more weight on one model versus another, but it just doesn't have that human touch. Yeah, well, again, like going back to the summertime with, with the hurricanes, you know, and, and, and that's where, you know, granted, a, a, a big snowstorm is going to impact, you know, a good portion or a good amount of people with plowing and timing and, you know, you get on the larger scale of things with hurricanes and you're talking where people have to get moved out of cities or they have to, you know, evacuate. And mm-hmm. it, these these are, those are the serious things when you start to see hurricanes hyped up on these yeah. social media. You know, look at this Cat 5 hurricane that's going to be in the Gulf of Mexico by next week. Well, it, as fun as it is with a snowstorm, you know, now you start talking about human life and things like that. And then then the scare factor really starts to get involved. Mm-hmm. You know, snowstorms are one thing. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, great. Let, let, let's yeah. have a, a, a one to two foot blizzard. You know, everyone likes a good snowstorm. Mm-hmm. But you start talking about the hurricanes and, and then it becomes not only a scare factor, but a serious human factor. And you worry about, you know, now now we got something serious we got to talk about because, we're, we, you know, we, we've got some major forecasting duties here for whoever's going to be involved with this. and And that's where... I don't like the social media part of obviously because it's not the fun part anymore. It's more like, all right, well, you know what? We got to get this stuff out of here and we got to go with the serious stuff. Get the television forecaster that lives down there that knows what's going to happen here. And that's who you start to follow. You don't follow, you know, uh, uh, somebody that's hyping up some kind of a storm there because that's where you want to really, you know, get your right information from because it's not serious now instead of just, you know, worrying about a snowstorm. There's pros and cons with all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, find yourself a credible source. It doesn't have to be, 
you know, weather works. It can be, you know, the National Hurricane Center or or the right. National Weather Service or something like that. But uh, always, always check something. If you see something going on YouTube or whatever or, or on Facebook or wherever it may be, double check it. Mm-hmm. Don't just don't just take it by its word. Why don't you, you know, go to, you know, the National Weather Service or or go to a more credible source to see if there's any validity in that forecast, I mean, right. you, you really have to, and especially nowadays with so much information out there, a lot of times you don't know what's true and what's false. So you really have to make sure you know your source. Don't just take it for granted of what, uh, you know, Bob down the street shared on right. his Twitter today. And, and that's um, where that's where the separation factor comes in with, with WeatherWorks. You know, and, and mm-hmm. of course, you can get your forecast again from a, there's so many sources. I don't, you know, we're not going to name them, of course. We don't want to name them. But like he even said, the weather service and things like that. But when you want that specificity, you know, that's where we come in. That's where a private forecasting company yeah. comes in. And we, we have that human touch and we have that uh, consultation factor where, folks can call in and get the forecast and mm-hmm. hey you know I, I, a shower just popped up how long is this going to last here and you know summertime thunderstorms you know i nobody can sit there and tell you that it's going to rain right here at 2 p.m when there's a chance of thunderstorm pretty much for your whole vicinity sometime in the mm-hmm. afternoon but god can only tell you that or wherever you <laughs> worship and things like that but it's hard to say that if so you know that, that's where the alert services come in from our from our from our company and things like that and that's the kind of stuff that you that we differentiate from just the common forecasting out there you know so i would say the bottom line here brad is uh by all means you know go out there do your research find your models things like that um, but when it comes down to life and property and things like that, that's when you have to find your credible source. So just right. please, I, I encourage everybody out there to learn as much as they want to about weather, but really let the experts go yeah. and tell you um, how this is going to happen. Like Brad said, a lot of these uh, meteorologists out there are not just hypesters. They're trying to get you the correct forecast so you can make the right decision. But uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up here, Brad. For yeah, perhaps... it's a good, good, good conversation. I mean, it was a, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a tough topic. I mean, you know, everyone, it's just, it's, it's the time that we live in. This, I mean, yeah. 20 years ago, there was no <laughs> hype. There was the grandma at the uh, local convenience store saying, I heard there's going to be two to three feet yeah. next yeah. week. That's well, what you uh, heard. To that point, though, that's another that's another good quick thing we can talk about. You know, how often do you see that stuff on social media? There's going to be a big snowstorm where their television meteorologist is, is expecting a big storm. And what happens at the stores, Mike? It's just like oh, bread and milk's gone. Guys, you'll be okay. <laughs> Plowing and snow removal and, and snow and ice management has come a long way yeah. since the 60s and 70s. Yeah, you're right. And it's not like you're locked in your um, house for three or four days after a storm now. I mean, you know, maybe 12 hours, maybe the next day you're fine to get out unless it's some kind of a monster storm. But most of the time, you know, within 24 hours, you can oh, man. go back to your normal lives. I mean, a lot of our clients, they work day and night getting uh, things reopened and stores reopened and, and, and shops and roads and whatever it might be. So, you know, it's not like it used to. I mean, even if I think back to the blizzard of 96 here in, uh, in the mid-Atlantic, uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, I-, I felt like we were closed down out of school for at least a week yeah. uh, when that happened. But, you know, now it seems like you get a storm that's 30 inches and we're opened up in uh, yeah. you know, a day or two. Um, yeah. So it's come a long way since the past. And um, yeah. and that pretty much, like I said, wraps it up. Now, we do have a WeatherWorks app. So we don't want to totally, <laughs> you know, hammer on these apps here. Our app is basically for our clients. It delivers our forecasts, uh, delivers our products like certified snowfall totals, and also will eventually down the road possibly even uh, have winter risk in, incorporated into it. And not to mention our notifications that go out before right. snowstorms. Um, so th- that's what our app does. It kind of works with our clients, gets them the information as fast as possible. So so that's what we do over here. But Yeah, um, I mean, you, use the technology today to your advantage. Don't let it confuse you, which is yes. basically a lot of it does today. So find a credible source that you like. Hopefully it's weather works, but, you know, that's <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thing. And go with it, you know, and 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 that's a good way to to figure out what what's going to happen because there's so much there's so much noise out there, and especially when you have an impactful system, whether it's a you know a tropical system or Hurricane Sandy, you know, even uh, 
you know, years ago, how, how the European model was the one that st stood out against the other models and say, you know, all the other models basically, you know, kind of took it out to sea, but the Euro uh, kept on saying, no, 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 it's going to turn right into the East Coast. And, and every forecaster, mm -hmm. every meteorologist was like, oh my gosh, could you imagine if this happened? But all the other guidance is saying it's going out to sea, but of course we mm -hmm. saw what happened and, and it was one of the storms that were still to this day, you're like, oh my God, King Euro, uh, you know, hit mm -hmm. that storm. So it, it nailed it. Basically it said Sandy was going to go into the to these coasts and it did so again that that's kind of where we're at these days and uh, just again use use that technology to your advantage brad let's not get hung up on sandy we'll have a whole podcast about sandy all right i'm looking forward to that one maybe <laughs> we'll maybe i'll to... just listen to that one yeah i we'll wasn't even here get... for sandy i was living down south still i, I was uh i was down there before i came back here but uh, yeah. of course i watched it from afar and it was yeah it was uh it was an amazing storm even Ooh. from uh from that vantage point yeah, we'll definitely have a whole podcast on that. I could tell stories about working the storm at Weatherworks sure. and 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 how we were doing through that, and even how we had some uh, relief efforts that went down to New Jersey mm -hmm. and with a lot of our meteorologists to help out. But you know, that about wraps it up here, Brad, for uh, the apps and weather hype, guys. So thank you again for listening to the Weather Lounge podcast. Remember, this is always a bi-weekly podcast. We'll have new topics every two weeks. Um, if you have any ideas for topics or some suggestions, drop us an email at weatherlounge at weatherworksinc.com. We're also on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, our podcast you can find wherever you get your apps too, on Apple, on uh, Android, or Podbean, or wherever it may be. You can find the Weather Lounge and listen to that every two weeks and even go back in history and look at some of the first episodes of our podcast. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. I'd like to wish you back to have a good time with us once again in another couple weeks in the Weather Lounge.